Good morning. There is no, there is still no confirmed or probable case of uh, COVID-19 in Nunavut. The total number of people under investigation to date is 1,288. 137 people are still currently under investigation. The Prime Minister announced earlier this week that the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit, CERB, will be extended for another two months. While this is a great relief to those people who cannot work because of COVID-19, I want to remind people that this is a benefit for a specific reason. I hate to sound like a broken record, but if your regular employment or your income has not been impacted by the pandemic, you are likely not eligible for CERB, and the federal government may need you to pay it back later. Please don't apply or access this funding if it is not meant for you. Otherwise, you may find yourself with a bill you cannot afford to repay. Thank you. The CERB warnings, as you put it yourself, uh, you don't want to sound like a broken record, but you have been repeating the warnings to you about them using the CERB program. The federal government hasn't told us how much CERB money is going to each province and territory yet, and Family Services wasn't able to tell me the difference in payments from this time last year to this time this year. So it's hard to find out the amount there. What I'm wondering, does your government have any hard proof or numbers that Nunavumiut are misusing the CERB benefit? Thank you for the question. We don't have any hard proof that it's being abused, but it is uh, my understanding and it is very easy to access. If you apply, there's no check and balances that uh, you will more, most likely be approved because the federal government says that uh, when they do their taxes, all will be reconciled and whether you're eligible or not eligible will be determined then. Government 
I want to ask about uh, the airline funding again. Now, it's come out recently that uh, both Quebec and the NWT have been contributing to the Northern Airlines, but not to the scale that the government of Nunavut has. What I'm wondering is, are you satisfied with our neighbors' contribution, or do they need to kick in more to help support these airlines? Thanks, Kenton. It's a valid question. Uh, part of the review when we looked over the financials and, and what took so long uh, was separating the different regions from the uh, the books, if you want to call it that, from the airlines, uh, just for that exact example, to make sure that as we're providing relief, as Northern Quebec is providing relief, as NWT is providing relief, it's for their portion of the business model. Uh, so I feel quite comfortable that the oversight that we've provided along with Transport Canada has has given me some comfort in, in making sure that, that we're not subsidizing other, other jurisdictions. Northern Quebec Coin me for the interpretation, I'll keep this one shorter. Uh, the financial information your government has been able to see from the airlines, I'm wondering who among government will that be shared with? Is that just for your department? Will that be shared with cabinet or will the regular members receive access to the numbers that you use to make your decisions. Thanks for the question, Kent. It would have been with officials with the Department of Finance, the Department of Justice and Economic Development and Transportation. And I believe the Premier's office was also involved at EIA. Uh, as far as officials, I haven't even seen the information. Uh, uh, we, we signed a non-disclosure agreement with the airlines to make sure they're, they're a private business. And, and to get to this level of, of funding, we needed to have some comfort in that we're not, again, public dollars, we want to make sure that we're, that we're doing everything properly. Uh, so we let the experts on our side of the table deal with their experts on their side of the table, uh, so there won't be any uh, divulging of any of the financial information. Rajini Sharma, Nunavut News. Minister Hicks, what are the financial, economic, or any other benefits that are formed as a result of the travel bubble between the two territories? Rajni Sharma, you know, good news, good news, Minister Hicks, that's what I'm saying, I'm not going to be able to do it, I'm not going to be able to do it, I'm not going to be able to do it, I'm not going to be able to do it. It's pretty hard to quantify that right now uh, with the with the COVID-19 situation that we're dealing with. Cross-territorial trade has limited somewhat, uh, but we also have our connections to the southern jurisdictions. Like in this region, we deal a lot with Ontario, with the Kivalik, they deal a lot with Manitoba, and then obviously in the west, uh, NWT and, and somewhat Alberta. So it's kind of hard to quantify right now, especially with the travel 
what little travel is going on. Uh, we're hoping that there will be some more increased trade uh, now that, that those routes are, are open. Uh, but there's still limitations on cargo capacity, so that would be one factor. But hopefully it will also open up some tourism opportunities uh, for both territories. Ontario, Alberta, and in maybe not so much on the economic side of things, but from the personal side of things, there's still a lot of people from Nunavut and NWT that live in, in each other's territory. So just having that ability to be able to travel back and forth to visit family, I've already heard some very positive feedback that way that you know, people may be canceling their summer holidays to go south, but they're able to come here and visit family. Thank you, Minister Higgs. May I talk to Dr. Patterson, please? Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Patterson, uh, you mentioned that one of the conditions for the travel bubble was that people who, once they travel to the other territory, need to remain in the territory for the duration of their stay. I'm just wondering how is that specific <coughs> measure being enforced? Lou Tom Hadison, Dana Malita, we have to see my yard, like a town, Nassin, and Munna, Cher, make Nuna Vumulo. I say, I know of it to see my Vimula, we look at Hanotam and Namalita, Kalanga. Thanks. We're, <coughs> we're working with the NWT to uh, share information, to figure things out, and work together to keep our residents, residents of both territories safe. One of the things is that any individual who arrives in uh, Yellowknife or in other parts of Northwest Territories has to have an isolation plan, and if they do not, then um, for, and this happened to some Nunavumiut earlier on with the medical travel changes, they're automatically referred to our isolation hubs, and we still have that open in Yellowknife, and uh, are assessing the situation whether or not we need it in the long run. So, it, bottom line, a Nunavumiut returning to Northwest Territories from outside of the bubble would be directed into that hub in Yellowknife as it stands. <laughs> Megan Dooling, Nunatiak News. Uh, is it within the realm of possibility to have a travel bubble with Greenland? Megan Dooling, Nunatiak, 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 and I don't, I have no influence on that. Um,
you mentioned last when we were talking about when you announced this that uh, liquor inspectors would enforce social distancing. I'm wondering what you're telling them to look for because they won't know who's in whose household or who's been in contact. So how is that going to be enforced? That gets to the difference between regulations and orders versus recommendations and guidelines. In the orders, there's a requirement that tables or groups are six feet apart. Uh, if people wanted to, could seven or eight people from seven or eight different households get together at the bar and, and hang out? Yes. Uh, would I advise that? No, I wouldn't. And it's not enforceable and nobody's going to be going around checking addresses or anything like that. <laughs> And I think it also gets to there's still that personal responsibility on each and every one of us to limit our exposure, to limit the risk of acquisition and transmission of, of COVID-19 because the decisions that we make in moments like that have not just impact us, but they impact everybody else in the group and potentially the entire community. <laughs> Question for the Premier. Please. I'm wondering where you said uh, in response to Kent that you don't actually know how many people are applying for CERB and what those numbers look like. And it's, it's not the first time you've warned about people not to apply to CERB if they're not eligible. So I'm wondering where your warning is coming from. I know you're having lots of meetings with the federal your federal counterparts, are they telling you to pass that message on, or why are you, as you said, acting like a broken record with this? So, we look at our neighbor, who has been a bit of a government of a country, and the China to have not to quicker use a to share a hat to go to go bigger hang it, but a summa time of how to have to talk it, government of a country, no, cut him a hat to have a hat to have a hat to have a I just want to make sure that Nunavum you are <clears throat> aware that, uh, and the federal government says it's not free money. It's for anyone that has their income or their job has, an, has been affected by COVID-19. If your job, has, if you don't have reduced hours, if you still have a job or and your income has not been affected by COVID-19, then by their eligibility criteria, then you are not eligible for the SERPs. And from my understanding is it's not very hard to get approved. If you apply, then odds are you're going to get it because the federal government also said when tax time comes, that's the day of reckoning. And I just want to make sure all the new know all the facts so that when that day of reckoning comes, when they do their tax, that they don't get a big bad surprise. Kina <laughs> 
ทานอนุวันนอยอนนทีนมิคานุทากว่ากีนอยเลียติดอุบลูบะปิลแกหุ่นนิงินนะปัดไทยมัดทานกีนอยพิกุนิมกาอคิลีกาทานอุจักติลูอคิลีกาเขามาไม่ทากว่ากับมันทุกข์กุดกุดอุกักให้มันมันทากว่าอิงคำทากนี่ตัดตัดเลือกปัจจัยทันทันทีมุลักปัดทานขาวินนังเนี่ยมาทานกีนอกีนอยตาเล่าตัวกีนอกตาเขาเล่ามางานอุบลูบะปิกาคังสุนิกีนอกตาเล่ามันถ้ากว่ากินอะไรเราจุดพิการพิการข้างอีกแล้วสุดที่อิมมาคาถ้ากว่าอุจักติกิยาข้างเนี่ยมันก็ถ้ากินอะไรทำไมต้องขัดคุณ I'll have to discuss that with our legal team, but I, I to be honest, I doubt it, Megan. Uh, when we come to the analysis part of things, we have our own experts in house uh, that have. The oversight on the information that was received, and you know, as as politicians, uh, we have to rely on the expertise uh, in house that we have. And I have full confidence in the in the people that looked at that information and and gave us guidance on it. It was a very difficult process, uh, and that's why it did take so long, is to make sure that all these checks and balances were in place, and that the oversight was there, uh, and that there was a lot of comfort with the information from both sides. Uh, there, there was a lot of back and forth. Uh, so at the at the end of the day, I I don't see a a value of politicians getting involved in 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 that side of things. It's difficult when we're the ones making the decision on the appropriation, and it's very difficult for me to sit here. Yeah, trust me, uh, because I'm trusting the people that gave me the information. But this is a very unique scenario, and and it's it's complicated because it's a private enterprise. Both of them are private enterprises. And just one final question: um, Do you have any updates on what happens in terms of funding airlines after June, and if slash when you'll get more money from the federal government? Okay, I'm not going to be talking about that. I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be talking about that. June, June. And that's a good question, Megan, and I appreciate it. It's very, again, uh, with the process that we went through, it's we, we feel that the numbers are, are stabilized and, and in, interpretable, I guess, if you want to use that term. Uh, at the same time, we still got to figure out a time frame, and, and those negotiations are ongoing. Uh, and I don't anticipate anything in the next week, but I am hoping that uh, in the next few weeks that we'll have some progress made. Progress for more money.
kanakong mga tanan lo nak tuga lo ako sa ni nat pinasa ako si ulang tumi kayan tu kasi wala kan nila ako tuga ano tigi kina yan ito yung tau kan nila halang mga ta Jackie McKay CBC News um, Minister Hicks uh, the debt cap um, for the government of Nunavut has raised by a hundred million dollars. Um, I'm wondering um, why the government's increase in the debt cap for the territory is now and what led to these conversations and if they have to do with spending for COVID-19. Jackie McKay, CBC, Kuni Minister Hicks, Tako, Akilit Sanigum Nanak Mot, Isulit Tabbing, I don't know, Governor Kuita, 100 million Mula Island ago, Sumata Namis Ungaratos, the Mamma, no one joined the Pitchetigit Lugoba. Thanks for the question, Jackie. And with the other two territories that had approached the federal government for increase in the debt cap, and with some of the change in accounting rules and with COVID-19 and, and a lot of the uncertainty to go around that, uh, we felt a, a small increase to our debt cap would be prudent. Uh, there is, uh, when I say accounting, some changes in general accounting practices that have changed is capitalization of long-term leases didn't used to go against our debt cap. Now what? it does. Debt cap. Mm-hmm. With the complexities in today's world with different infrastructure opportunities, uh, there may be opportunities for larger infrastructure projects. As COVID relief measures come into place, construction is, is, a, is a great economic driver. Uh, so we want to make sure that if the opportunities do arise that we can participate in them. <laughs> Just to put it in kind of layman's terms, uh, we've increased the limit of our credit card, doesn't mean we're going to use it. In 2015, you also raised the debt cap. Um, what's the point of having a debt cap if we keep raising it? 2015, Again, it's like raising the limit on your credit card. It if an emergency or if a situation where an investment opportunity arises. Uh, in 2015, uh, the debt cap was raised to address some of the infrastructure projects that were coming forward from what, from what I recall. And one of my concerns at that time uh, was how we were going to service that debt. Uh, that's why we've been very prudent with use, utilizing our debt. Twenty fifteen, Mitana I guess basically so as we've gone forward, as we've matured, there has been some changes. We still the majority of our debt cap use that we've used right now is to guarantee Crown Corporation lines of credit like Kulik Energy Corporation and also capitalizing long-term leases which is a change in accounting practices which does impact the debt cap but it, it before it would just be a lease that would be on the books for 10 years or 20 years now we actually have to capitalize it like the Kelowit Airport so it does look like there's a, a big debt there but it, it's through a normal payment process anyway Mm-hmm. 
Atuina ham ne hasutillo sulu akai guna hulinot abatinul luni tanda luni ne halun ne hanga tayo kubi akilit saha kuta umat kisah ni tayma tiga tak akilah sok tau benda yang ham ni ni tayma akilit saha ni guna tayma tiga hari akak tu. Thank you. Um, my next question is for Dr. Patterson. Um, the Worker Safety Compensation Commission um, sent out a press release this week saying that um, all businesses um, and workplaces needed to have a COVID plan for their workers. Um, to enable them to go back to the office. I'm wondering if the government of Nunavut has one. That's correct. I have been on the local market. 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 I have been on the local uh, and compensation commission's um, regulations and requirements and so each office department should have plans and preparations for COVID-19. I understand that they should, but I'm asking if they do. The departments don't all report to me, uh, so I can't guarantee that each and every one does. Uh, Department of Health does, but uh, the others I can't guarantee. Thank you. Um, we've seen across the country that um, there's been an increase in overdose deaths. Uh, deaths sorry. Um, uh, some people are contributing that to, to serve funding. I know um, fentanyl overdoses is not something in Nunavut that we struggle with, but we're, I'm wondering if you've seen um, an increase in people from the hospital for overdoses or al alcoholism. The last time I looked at the data for alcohol was about a month ago, and at that point there had been a uh, two or three percent increase in the number of alcohol related visits to uh, the emergency room at QGH which statistically is not significant it's impossible to say that that's from COVID or CERB funding or just <coughs> random fluctuation that we always see <laughs> Thanks, um, Mr. Hicks. You said over the last uh, over the last weeks that the hotel quarantine was supposed to improve for Inuit in isolation. That there was a new plan. Um, so far, we're hearing from Inuit um, in isolation that things aren't improved. Um, so, can you clearly explain um, <coughs> what this plan is and how you expect to improve isolation for Inuit? Minister Hicks, oh, you got me. So I was so lost to me. I go across the valley of town. I'm thinking, no, 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 no,
what we've done in the past is we've sent staff down to the isolation hubs to work with the contractors on, you know, concerns on whether it be food or uh, number of outdoor visits and or outdoor trips, I guess, not visits, you're not supposed to be visiting. Um, but uh, in, in the meantime, so we've, we've done that in the past and have made some improvements. And I know we do get a few complaints every once in a while, but we also get a lot of compliments on the quality of food and, and the, the time that people can go out. But in the meantime, we've taken the measure of, of actually working with a contractor to have people stationed uh, at the isolation hubs that can address any ongoing concerns and I still uh, strongly recommend that people have concerns that they bring them to our attention. Uh, too often I've, I don't have Facebook but I hear stories of people posting things on Facebook and yet we don't ever get a formal complaint or a formal inquiry from those people and we just hear it through third party so help us make it better. Uh, bring, bring forward your concerns and, okay. and let us know where we're going wrong. Um, one of the difficult parts is the food. Uh, it's very hard to cater to literally hundreds of people that have different tastes with uh, a, a set menu. Uh, it's like many people that have traveled here in Nunavut. Uh, if you go to some communities, you go, you know, if you're staying in a hotel, they don't ask you what you want for dinner. They ask you if you're having dinner and you eat what you're served, uh, whether you like it or not. And in cases like that, where it is difficult to appease everyone, so we, we do anticipate that not everyone is going to be happy with the with the menu and with the food that's being provided. And we're we're doing everything that we can to help make their stay as as least comfortable as least uncomfortable as possible. From your answer, um, is there a liaison person from the government in Nunavut at each of the isolation hubs for people's issues and complaints? Is that what you mean? I'll have to confirm exactly how often they're on site, but uh, the intention is to have in each hub somebody that is that does spend time on site for people to, to address concerns. And ultimately, people feel free to contact the Office of the Patient Relations to bring forward any concerns or any issues. Um, for Wait. The, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for those um, people in contact with the isolation hubs, um, are they Inuit or are they, do they speak Inuktitut for Inuit lingual people? 
Tack och du gör mig vem du tror vi utgår ju ni innovat, innovativt och kallar man vi utgår nåt kan nåt lopp vi utgår nåt vi. I would have to check on how whether each hub has an institute speaking liaison, uh, but through the Office of the Patient Relations, there is an opportunity to have an institute speaking representation. Minister Hinty, Ken Driscoll, EPTN National News. Uh, back to the airline thing for just a moment. Almost half of the total your government has spent on COVID-related spending has been for that airline subsidy. And you mentioned the checks and the balances between yourselves and the airline for the sharing of the information. A pretty big check and balance in this assembly is the regular members. How are the regular members expected to ask questions and make decisions on this funding if they're not going to be provided with the details of how it came about? Kent Driscoll, PT and Connick Minister Hicks, Taco Hart, you learn on Mopid Jutig Logo, Taco, Abalong, a government coup, Atosima Yang, you know what you are not to learn on Mot Hangata Yulri, you know, Sima Mata, Taco, Loha Kauga, we have his third share, Hamner Sugit. Taco, Taco Yaguna Jain, Tinagit, Maligal, Titina, Nuhano, Aperso, Nalangata. Thanks for the question, Kent, and I think it's, again, I've been on both sides of the, the, of the table, uh, so I think I can speak with a, a fair bit of experience on that, where this is an unprecedented time. Uh, never before has the government had to provide a, a subsidy like this to a private enterprise uh, without having that check and balance of the Legislative Assembly. Uh, which very much complicates it for me because I'm going to be sitting at that witness table defending uh, these appropriations and for legal reasons uh, again I will confirm with with my legal team but I doubt very much that uh, I would be able to speak to the details on the financials of, of the of a private enterprise uh, it's not unprecedented federally where you look at some of the bailout packages that uh, the federal government has done in the past to the automotive industry, to the uh, air industry, manufacturing. But for us, this is new ground. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to see how it plays out. But realistically, there's there's l very little information other than my confidence and, the, and our cabinet's confidence that we're, we've done the right thing. <laughs> Tamaki ni minister ulun ni maligali ng tuwid na ulun ni tanda ng kausa ay gunat sa ang nunar jo alam ay tama ni at yung ito ko ni hatsa ay kata tay matigilo tay matikayuti ni kino yan ito ni sila ng sumangin at tanda ni hati o yun nun tay may madan na nalunar sa hatsa ay kasawa ay hamner to maligali ng yun ulun kausa ay gunat sa ulun ni tanda ko ito kasi gawuti sa kikta ulun na mga ata kasi ane sa kikta ulun na jan ito nalunar ni to one last one. Uh, as you mentioned, you've been a regular member of this assembly. When you were a regular member of this assembly, would you have taken trust me as an answer for that significant amount of spending? Maligali ako tuwid na usi magabita, ma tay maligay ako kaya maligali ako tuwid na ulote, ma sule yoring nga. That's a pretty loaded question. I guess it would depend on the circumstance. And I know, like as I said, this is unprecedented. But there's also legal restrictions on what we can and cannot discuss. And I know it's putting a big leap of faith in me and in our in our government that. We have put our due diligence into the review of the financials of the airlines, and this wasn't uh, put it this way. We definitely did not take their first or second or probably even third offer. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth of itemizing, uh, even down to the regional impact. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we we're providing coverage for Nunavut for Nunavutu. Then I Ayon nato, maligaling ng tigulo ay sulit tapbihar tuni. 
And I guess just to, just to close on that, Kent, it's, it's difficult. As a cabinet, we make decisions uh, where we are privy to information uh, that regular members and the public aren't necessarily privy to uh, for many different reasons, in this case mainly being legal, uh, where it would just it would st stall out the whole system if we if we were itemized. We don't know what is of interest, and I don't anticipate a, a, a free pass uh, from, from the regular members. They're here to do their due diligence, and I, uh, like I said, I've been there. So I totally understand and appreciate the, the role of the Assembly in the approvals. These are unprecedented times. We've had to take some unprecedented steps. Allah Maligal of Twin Nataku, Takusimangi Tang in Nitako, Takohatangata. Kisani, Nalunangi to Tako, Apicotala, Maligal of Twin Natamako, Kino, Yapto, Jusima, Yumitsano, Kisani Tautema, Naluna, Javi, Yasacha, Twin Nahatam, Nata Katako, Hanata Yuli, Kunituni Yasima, Yumitsano. Doctor Patterson, please. We said earlier in this press conference that um, seven or eight people could potentially go out to a bar and sit together, but we're saying that only five people are, are allowed in a household together. Um, why, why would there be a difference between those two things? <laughs> The five people refers to having people from different households in uh, into a person's house. But if uh, if we have a house with ten or twelve people in it, we have not told them at any time that they have to separate or move out or anything like that. So. Uh, our preference would be to keep it the mixing down to five households, but if ten people show up in, in an establishment and say we're all from the same household, there's no way to enforce that. Um, so again, it, it comes back to what we're recommending in terms of what are best practices for all Nunavumia to reduce their risk. um, I think just people have been asking and they're wondering um, when, because they're back at work and they're they're seeing a lot more people, um, when the amount of people they could have in their home could will be raised. Probably in the near future, but the, there's a significant difference in household contacts or even the visiting that happens when people are over at your house versus when you're at work. And we know from most infectious diseases that the risk uh, created with a household contact is much greater than a work contact, even if you work beside the same person for your, you know the entire shift uh, every day of your uh, average work day. 
so when it sat in the Nalanatawa after. Tamako adjigging it to Marie, but a silver lupula had to get a tattoo, a mala canaya had to get a tattoo, a canaya had to get a taral of the Lugitama, Hanigging in a Sagun Natchang, a Takistan, a pullak to the Tama adjigging in Mata. Um, I think I think I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>